consider um, our new code of conduct, and we've yet to approve it because we're going through the uh, the wording of that, a joke at all. Um, it's been put together by our staff, and uh, we went through and spent a fair bit of time on it the other day. And when you read the code of conduct in a number of areas, um, it always speaks to provincial legislation. It always speaks to uh, uh, adhering to provincial legislation. And there are reports and meetings uh, for a number of reasons, and they're listed in the legislation. And I know you've probably done your homework there too. Uh, and so uh, that's the way that business is conducted. And um, we have shared as much as we can share. And when it comes to a legal opinion, uh, and this is just from a personal perspective, I trust the, I trust the, excuse me, not the floor. Um, I trust the legal opinion of our solicitor more than any member of council because the solicitor works for all of council and uh, especially when that legal opinion is coming from someone who isn't a lawyer. So I certainly trust our lawyer's opinion on that much more than, than someone else's from council. Our next uh, speaker is Donna Bush. Before I the time, I just want to congratulate and thank you very much, Marilyn, for her. I have my own. Mayor, councillors, and fellow taxpayers. For, no, for months now, some of you have called us a small vocal minority, spouting incorrect information regarding the proposed NHL size arena. While we have done our own due diligence, we have not been privy to all of the secret reports that staff or council has. So, if you expect public buy-in, it behooves you to vote tonight to release all of the taxpayer-funded documents that have been under lock and key and without public scrutiny. Recently, the Toronto Sun, Maddie uh, DiMuccio, wrote, while some insist professional hockey is a golden opportunity for our region, let's look at the track record of the NHL. Writing in Forbes magazine in September 2012, Kurt Vandenhausen, points out that only three of the 30 NHL teams are actually successful. Many are losing millions of dollars each year. A January 29, 2013 article in the Huffington Post by a Richard Ivey School of Business professor regarding the recently passed Edmonton Arena called it one of the worst deals in Canadian history. Study after study shows that sports teams and arenas generate little economic benefit, Moffat said. Perhaps taxpayers are smarter than some mayors and councillors give us credit for. So, Mr. Mayor, and the other six councillors who vote to continue on this arena dream. As a taxpayer, I want to know how you arrive at the conclusion that Markham, even without an NHL team, will be sustainable. One of the document authors, Brad Humphreys, University of Alberta sports economist, said his material was cherry-picked. What facts were left out of the great opportunity equation? Interestingly, cherry-picking isn't a new political sport. CBC News, August 7, 2008, reports a very similar MO in Edmonton. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation accused city officials of hiding some important facts, such as the NHL arenas in Vancouver, Ottawa, Montreal, and Toronto were built with private financing alone. Humphreys isn't surprised that the report was edited, he states. They're going to spin it in the best possible light. It's sort of like a piece of propaganda. It's not the whole truth. There's also information that should be out there that's omitted. Just like any other propaganda piece that you might expect. Of people that are seeking taxpayer dollars, primarily, to be used by private enterprise. I think it is admirable that the mayor and council want to bring jobs and money to Markham. IBM, Honda, American Express, etc. I say great job. Well done. However, this is a whole different animal. And I am not a gambler. And certainly not with the debt of hundreds of millions of dollars that taxpayers have an excellent chance of inheriting. Respectfully, I do not believe that any of you, nor your staff, have the business acumen to tackle a project of this size and complexity. The public sector and the private sector are polar opposites. One spends taxpayers' money and the other makes investor profits. A 20,000 seat arena definitely falls into the private domain sector. So councillors, why are you jumping into a shark-infested ocean 
when you can barely swim and don't even have access to a life jacket, except taxpayers' pockets. Kimuchio continues, Markham has enough on his plate dealing with important items such as traffic congestion and delivering basic municipal services, such as sewers, I might add. Common sense tells me that the risks far outweigh the perceived benefits, and I agree with her. Many Markham residents are very skeptical about recent happenings at the town. Secret meetings, secret reports, zero transparency, questionable accountability. Markham taxpayers need to be treated with respect, honesty, and integrity. And we need to have access to critical information being used to make huge financial decisions, such as the $500,000 plus reports that may help clarify our incorrect information. I ask each and every councillor to allow the public to read the reports and to have the opportunity to draw their own conclusions versus, versus speculation. If the seven of you have proof why this arena would be a good deal for Markham taxpayers, then you should have no apprehension standing up for your constituents and voting tonight to release all of the arena reports. Through the chair, I challenge the town solicitor to provide taxpayers with credible reasons why she has continuously recommended to council that these reports are not to be released to the public. I would like to hear her response, please, but after I make one last comment, I have previously been told that the solicitor does not work, excuse me, does not work for the taxpayers. Just wrap up, please. I am on the last few, set, few words. Does not work for the taxpayers. So then who is protecting us and our best interests? The solicitor? is about to enter into a $325 million contract with a partner whom you know nothing about. Your Clyde, GTA Sports and Entertainment, and now it's GTA Center LP. All the same owner and no due diligence has been done, yet we've spent over half a million dollars on reports and consultants to have a P3 partnership. All of this could have been avoided had you done the appropriate research before signing any confidentiality agreement. Three of you signed a confidentiality agreement prior to the election. The rest of you signed early in 2011, prior to you being shown a slideshow presentation regarding what we now know all along to be an NHL arena. We've been told for months that this is not about a hockey team, but after last week it was quite apparent that it is. The slideshow presentation that you all saw in reference to the reports in question tonight were done prior to the announcement from Stephen Harper on March 16th that the federal government would no longer provide any funding for NHL-type arenas. Therefore, the Raymond James, Miller Thompson, KPMG, Barry Lyons, and possibly the Stephen Che reports are not only outdated, but inaccurate. I will assume that they were all done under the assumption that the federal government would kick in millions of dollars to this venture. KPMG was then hired to look at a P3 project for $21,777. Did the report tell you to put the idea out for tender and a proper procurement process? It should have given you the pros and cons of a P3 project. Did it state what I have found out? My research shows that with recreation center P3s, a private consortium will often have the right to charge user fees for the facility. Problems with these deals have come about when the private consortium have overestimated revenues and underestimated its operating expenses. This is what happened in the case of Cranbrook and the government ended up having to take over the facility. <coughs> because of the demise of the contract and the additional debt burden, Cranbrook was forced to accept the city's borrowing power was reduced. Ottawa recently had to provide additional funding to two of its recreational P3s when the private operators ran into financial difficulties. Even when a recreation P3 appears to be working perfectly, questions still exist about the overall benefit to the taxpayer. When a municipal government decides to enter into a P3 to build a recreation center, it essentially hands over revenue rights to the private operator. It also changes the nature of the facility. The facility's primary purpose is no longer, first and foremost, to serve the needs of the community, but rather to ensure a profit for the private partner. 
which now brings us to the Weir Falls report. After what you have just heard, how are you going to make this an MCF facility, while the town paid $50,000 to find a loophole to fit their needs? Professor, da Professor Daniel Mason and Brad Humphrey, both well-known economists and respected individuals, were hired to show us the economic benefits. What did the public get told? More local entertainment options, sense of community, more jobs in Markham. Per the presentation package, 886 to 1,000 post-construction jobs would become available. However, the mayor said on the Rob Ford show this weekend, it's about 200 full-time jobs, which as far as I'm concerned, is also a stretch. Both the National Post and the Toronto Star spoke to both authors, who claimed that the town should not proceed unless they have an anchor tenant in place, and that the town cherry-picked what information they wanted to use and make public. The vast majority of studies done on the financial benefits of new sporting facilities by researchers not connected to any sport, league, or team have not found any economic boost for cities. So building a new arena doesn't seem to have any effect on the city's employment, the capita income, hotel occupancy rates, or taxable sales. Economic benefits are greatly exaggerated. And for those cities that do see a business fund from hosting sporting events, it's a fraction of what is touted. The research published in the journal of Sports Economics found that in 11 out of 17 cases, when a city with a major league franchise goes through a period without a team due to a league lockout, or when a team such as the Winnipeg Jets leaves, it has no statistically significant impact on the hotel occupancy rates in that city. One of the issues is that consumers have a relatively fixed budget for their leisure activities, so money spent on a hockey game could be cash that would have been used to pay for a round of golf or to watch a basketball game. While local businesses may see an increase in sales around the stadium, it's sales and money that would have been spent in other parts of the community. Richard Powers, a lecturer at the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto, they're just redirecting the money into a certain area. He also states there is also the loss in public money taken away from other projects that would also benefit the community. Where are you diverting cash from? What other infrastructure projects that would be benefiting the community are being cancelled or put on hold? Ironically, tonight, the town is having to try and find $140 million to upgrade the infrastructure and sewer system, which is a necessity. Is this what the professor reports say, and is that why they're not being released? More reports were requested. Raymond James cost us $264,000 for 69 pages. The BDR report, $9,900 for an opinion letter and four pages of a report presentation. My Freedom of Information response claims they contain options as part of the deliberative process for the arena. The records contain financial commercial information that could prejudice the competitive position of one or more third parties. What competitive position? You signed an agreement that did not allow you to discuss with anyone else and it never went out for tender. They contain financial and commercial information that belongs to the city and recommendations to potential commercial transaction not yet finalized. What do I say? This is not your money to spend as you wish. This is our money and we have every right to know what you've been doing behind closed doors. The total amount of public money that is spent is $555,279 according to the Mark and Life document <coughs> dated October 15, 2012. Yet we are not allowed access. <coughs> Nothing about this arena, this arena has been transparent and lacks accountability to the taxpayer. So now we know that this P3 that we are looking at will profit the private sector, and it is not a community facility. Experts are saying it's not a viable project to undertake. Many articles and professors say there is no economic boost to our town. However, all the research that the residents are doing is wrong. The town has a different answer. But where is the proof? That you are right and we are wrong. Well, those reports are being kept hidden from the taxpayers of Markham. So if we are giving out misleading information, then release the reports. All the reports, not just part of the slide presentation, and prove to the taxpayers that this is not going to end up being a burden on the resident. The residents are being asked to trust the mayor and some councillors. This, this project is in the town's best interest, but they do not want to give up any supporting documentation to where the numbers come from. If it's such a good deal, then show the proof. Mr. Rouston told me several months ago that he wished the town would release reports. He said it would help his case, so let's release them. However, every day something new seems to pop up. Let's look at the in-camera meeting from yesterday. 
We were told property acquisition and solicitor client privilege. However, after being escorted out by the mayor that seemed to be in a rush to get rid of us, we overheard a comment by senior staff that said, they're waiting downstairs. After spending the better half of the afternoon on watch duty, lo and behold, Mr. Rouston, Gary Green, and Global Spectrum appeared through a staff-only door. What did they have to do with property acquisition? When the town tries to sneak people in and out of meetings, who do you trust? Mayor Ford sends out in his emails the following, I am dedicated to delivering customer service excellence, creating a transparent and accountable government, reducing the size and cost of government, and building a transportation city. I will continue to work on behalf of the taxpayers to make sure you get the respect you deserve. We are all in this together. Per the Municipal Act, Per the Municipal Act, the only reason that Council needs to go in camera is if they are discussing a matter related to the consideration of a request under the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. So under the law, Council does not have to hold any in-camera sessions. Therefore, there is no valid reason for those reports not to be released, as the original meetings did not have to be held in camera. Transparency starts from where you are sitting. I ask that all councils show leadership and accountability and vote to release all of the reports pertaining to the NHL arena. Thank you.